at the Junior and Cadet Fencing World Championships in Cairo, Egypt. And we have uh, the first semifinal round of individual men's foil, junior foil. And fencing in this first match is Russia's Stepan Martinovich versus Dong Young Choi of Korea. So we know we have, if, if Koreans are consistent in one thing, it's usually their speed. So they're fast. Very, very fast. This is going to be an, I, I expect it to be an interesting match. We saw Martinovich take take out uh, Olivar. Choi took out Kenji Bravo, so they both took out Americans, and now they get to fence each other to see who goes for the gold. Korean takes the first point of the evening, countered immediately. Point by the Russian. And Martinovich. Joy is having a challenge putting his hitting target. He's had the attack twice. I'm able to close it. Well, at that time, he was able to get the point on, bring it home. young men here sort of taking their time. Well, what they're doing is filling each other out. Sure. Seeing the distance. I'm watching Choi how he throws his blade close enough, not quite enough to hit, just enough to sort of Draw test the out. waters. Mm -hmm. Right. And try to suck it in for, that, for a pair of repos. Tries to draw him out. Then, and then he'll go. Right. Again, we're under pretty strict um, protocol here for COVID. Everyone wearing masks, everybody socially distancing. We have COVID marshals. We're in a it's called a bubble where everyone, everyone from the athletes to the coaches to the officials, all the way down to the to the volunteers and bus yeah. drivers, everybody. All the staff. Anybody everybody anybody in the bubble is tested. locked in. Yep. Tested every seventy two hours. Everyone's staying in hotels. Even if you are an Egyptian living locally here, you have to stay in a hotel that's part of this bubble. The, the you can't go home at night. The president of the Egyptian Federation was told that he could not even use his own car, even if he had somebody to drive it for him. So, you know, it's uh, 
Yeah. It, it, it's everybody, and we're only allowed to use the official transportation. And we're considering this not an overabundance of, of caution, but an abundance of caution. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, and uh, the, for example, the referee, when they're standing in front of the uh, athletes, they wear a mask. Anytime um, you but, approach anybody. But then when they go to do, for example, a video review, they put on a face shield. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because you know you're, you're no longer within the distance. When they, right. when they meet with their colleagues to confer on the video, they have to both wear face shields. It's basically everything to make sure that you will not put yourself at risk of contact tracing and, or contact, right. contracting and, COVID. And this is a you know sort of a precursor to what we're going to see this summer in Tokyo. It will be a similar kind of experience with the bubble. Yeah, we've been told that uh, those in Tokyo, if you go, you can expect to do nothing but go from the venue to the hotel. Sort of similar to what we're experiencing right now. Right. Or for the athletes of the village. Well, and you know, I have to give it to a lot of these um, teenagers because, you know, teenagers are teenagers and they, they, you know, they're young and they're energetic and they're friendly and they're seeing friends they haven't seen in a year and so, yeah. but I think they've all really been pretty good about trying to follow the rules here. They have. I, I will say that the athletes have uh, done a there. It's been more difficult to try to get some of the adults to conform and cooperate more than anything else. But even um, the, uh, we're not allowed to, you know, <laughs> gather in rooms. That almost hit my laptop. Yeah, or, or <laughs> me. Uh, thank you for your laptop as my shield. That was a body, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a, a, a mass cord that went flying from the the strip all the way across where the referee is right into my laptop as opposed to Don's face. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I know you may not feel this way, but thank you for your la laptop's defense. <laughs> Fortunately, my laptop seems to still be working. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even in the hotel, they have uh, uh, somebody on the floors because we're not allowed to uh, go from room to room either. Uh, right. No gathering in rooms. The only place we can gather is, you know, in the public uh, space in the lobby. And that's right. got to be socially distant. So strict protocols and enforced. It's not just to have the protocols. I think what's been really important is the, uh, is the enforcement. Right. And back on the action here, we've got 15, 14 seconds left in the first round with the Korean Dong Young Choi ahead 8-3 over the Russian Stepan Martinovich. Um, pretty good lead at this point. Um, Martinovich is going to have to uh, uh, get his uh, get some good advice at the break that's coming up here as to what to do to make up that point deficit. What he's hoping for right now is that he's going to get the. Oh. He did not get that, so the touch stands. All right, they take the break. One minute to sort it out and come up with a strategy that might be more effective for the Russian. And the Korean is going to be quite happy doing exactly what he was doing before, continuing to get touches. Yes, but at the same, by the same token, he's going to have to be aware because there's a good chance that this Russian's going to come back from the break with a little bit of a revised strategy. Absolutely. How to suck him in, how to move away. Uh, the, the advice could be, you know, be more effective, you know, and aggressive on your attacks. I mean, there, we have no idea what the next strategy will be. Or, you know, on the, 
other side it could be okay now we're going to change to this game even though i very seldom like to change when a game is working right if it ain't broke don't fix it i agree with that strategy Okay, back on the strip. Back on the piste. Eight three for Choi. And let's see what Mark Martinovich has come up with <coughs> well, to avoid that. Then Nine actually, three. Yep. Korean has come disconnected. Mm -hmm. the referee's going to help him attach his lame to the wiring. The grounding wire. The grounding wire. That wire, if that wire is not attached, uh, it breaks the circuit and your opponent cannot hit you, cannot score. Trying to get that blade straight after that. He made that very strong, hard attack. Right. Landed it. But. Puts a little bit of a kink in the metal you want to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Ooh, point in line. Pretty point in line. Looked like a double disengage. Mm. Nicely done. Martinovich makes a pair of repos. Okay, now he's starting to pick up the tempo, picking yep. up Choi's tempo, able to get him to stop. Yep. Take over still the got attack. Quite a bit to make up, however. Yeah, well, he's still got plenty of time. He's got 2.44 in this round and another three minutes. So. Right. Yeah, that's long. That's almost six minutes a long time. You're right. Yeah. It's not like they're fencing like, slow. No. Just to tie it up, that's a minute a touch. I think he wants to change weapons. Mm, actually, no, he's or he's tightening. Well, he's using a wrench. So what you yeah. do. Yeah. He, what you do is you can kink the blade and right. take all the, the really, that's the way I prefer to adjust the weapon. Yeah, well, you have a little more leverage that way. You can, well, you can really control it. Get it exactly how you want it. So that you can do something like that. Hit the target exactly the way you want it. Oh, what happened? It looks like, did he stomp on his foot? I don't know. He's untying his shoelace, taking his shoe off, and feeling his toe. Yeah, it looked like he may have stomped on it when he came forward. Yeah, he might have, yeah, or stubbed his toe kind of against him. Mm -hmm. They're going to have medical come out. It's time for the magic spray, maybe. Well, what you want to do is make sure it's not broken. Magic spray doesn't help breaks. Well, honestly, I don't think it really helps much. I mean, because, you know, like, if you have ice, it will, you know, reduce inflammation. But I don't think the spray does that. It just keeps it from hurting as much. Yeah. Basically allows you to compete through the pain. Right. And to there goes the magic spray. Yeah. More. <laughs> Underneath, too. I don't want to feel anything. Because this is hurting. Now then the question becomes, can you? Well, toe jams can hurt a lot. Yeah, it's, it's toe and it's also the, now they're gonna figure out, does he wanna take a medical timeout and, and wrap it? Yeah, although to give him a t medical timeout, you have to have actually a 
a pretty good reason. Just saying my toe hurts is usually not sufficient. That really does a lot of good. The medical technician is over there. <laughs> Has the face shield on his up as opposed to down. These are, these are the things that are so challenging. Is you have to remember to take pay attention to every detail. Yeah, you can right. see where he stepped on it in the replay. Coaches doing what most coaches do on a break. They try to coach from the box. I want to thank everyone out there for tuning in to the FIE Fencing Channel here on YouTube. It's also a pleasure to be able to work with you and uh, provide a little commentary for uh, the action here out of Cairo. Yes, thank you. Don, Don Anthony. My pleasure. Member of the FIE Executive Committee. Also Vice President of the FIE. And the FIE has worked very hard to get these last Olympic qualifying events. Oh, nice touch. Good for us. Worked them all the way down to the end. Maybe the magic spray did something. He's moving. He's picked up the pace quite a bit. A lot more, a lot more intensity. Yeah, he ha he's fencing with more energy. And sometimes, you know, after a little minor injury, that's not an uncommon thing. It sort of wow. wakes you up, but that was a single point for the Korean now 12-6. Not for a lack of trying for by Martinovic. No. I mean, they, they, they tried to hit each other, and then the Korean just switched the line and came around the other side. And again, this is a semifinal match, so um, these, these uh, boys are trying to get into the gold medal round. The winner of this the winner of this goes into the gold oh, medal round, and the loser gets a bronze medal. 13-6 for the Korean. Russian changing his weapon. The tempo and the timing on that last touch was just let him get close, let him get close. He could tell he was getting ready to launch an attack. Right. And before he could even get, boom, stopped him. I guess why they call it a stop thrust. Sometimes, you know, we, in Epe, I don't, know, I don't know, you can tell me, but in Epe, we sometimes call it a yielding parry. Sometimes you have a yielding parry. It's like you're, parry, you're yielding, you're coming back, you're moving back, and you're parrying, and then, then you... That would head. either be a parry or an opposition in form, yeah. typically. But yeah, we don't have that term in Sabre either. Oh, is that right? No, there's no yielding parries in Sabre. You think it's, a, maybe it's a little bit of an old school term. It could be. I mean, but I still think about it when I see these, these moves. 14-6, one touch away from the gold medal round for Choi. Martinov is not, Martinov is not giving not, up. No, he's not. This bout's not over. It's not over till it's over. And anybody who's been around fencing a long time knows that we've seen that happen too oh, many yeah. times. Another there time, eight fourteen. Absolutely. Yep. That looks review. like it might be the fifteenth and final point for the match for the Korean, but there is a request for a video review by the Russian, which is totally reasonable and 